The questions of who carried out today's attacks and how burn fiercely in the minds of Americans tonight. But we, we, but we do know that in the recent past, Canada has been used as a base for attempted terror attacks on the United States. The CBC's Terence McKenna has been preparing a documentary on the subject and has this report for us tonight. The most haunting foreshadowing of today's terror attack happened in Marseille, France in 1994. French commandos stormed an Air France jet which had been hijacked by Algerian Islamic militants. All the hijackers were killed. 159 hostages were freed. Seven had been killed. French authorities said the hijackers wanted to crash the plane fully loaded with fuel into Paris, if possible, into the Eiffel Tower. The trail from that case led French investigating magistrate Jean-Louis Bruguerre to uncover a worldwide network of Islamic terrorists. His work has brought him to Canada and the United States. This cell is spreading over the world like a web. You know? So it's very difficult to, to, to grasp this new threat. But it's very, very dangerous because, because uh, their target is very different. They try to target uh, not only France, but uh, uh, America. French investigators established links that led from the 1994 hijacking through the Paris subway bombs in 1995 and 96, and the trail eventually led them to a group of terrorists in Montreal, which included Ahmed Ressam, the man arrested at the American border with powerful explosives in the trunk of his car in 1999. Salim Jiwa covered the Rassam case for the Vancouver province. Well, I, I, I see the Rassam situation as a precursor of what was to come. Um, I, I see that as, as uh, I mean, the, the astonishing part is what, what Rassam was saying was, was the number of people who are trained. For example, he stated that 60 people, six zero people, are ready and on standby in Italy. He, he named a number of uh, groups in Sweden, number of people in Germany. So. Uh, I saw that as a precursor. I was talking to a security source in the United States and just a month ago, and he indicated that the U.S. was very nervous still that uh, something would happen and they would be unable to stop it. He said, he said to me that uh, these people are not going to stop, and you know it. Ahmed Rassam easily obtained a false Canadian passport and used it to travel to the city of Peshawar in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan. There he made contact with the Osama bin Laden organization, and entered a terrorist training camp in nearby Afghanistan for months of instruction in bomb making and assassination techniques. Islamic militants from many nations are trained in the Afghanistan camps. The Bin Laden organization has been monitored for years by the U.S. security apparatus and the Situation Room at the White House. James Steinberg was Deputy National Security Advisor in the Clinton administration. It's not simply a question of an individual belonging to one particular organization with one uh, particular target, whether it's the GIA in uh, Algeria or the Islam, Egyptian Islamic Jihad in Egypt, but rather a kind of loose network of people who have common uh, affiliations, common training, common associations, frequently linked to Afghanistan, which becomes sort of a pool of individuals who may be available to be involved in terrorist operations uh, elsewhere in the world. The Rassam case has brought to light numerous connections between the Osama bin Laden organization and Canada. Yes, indeed. Uh, there are other names, uh, as you know, uh, people who have, uh, who have direct telephonic links uh, in Canada with uh, uh, Osama bin Laden's right-hand man, uh, Abu Zubaydah. Um, there are people like that in Calgary. There are people like that in Vancouver. There are people like that in Montreal. There are people like that in Toronto. Uh, numerous telephonic links have been found with, with uh, very sinister people uh, and very dangerous people in Canada. Suspected terrorists in Canada are monitored by the Canadian Security and Intelligence Service, CSIS, and agents like Dan Lambert. Counterterrorism is the main priority of the CSIS in terms of its mandate. We have two-thirds of our resources are dedicated to counterterrorism. We work extremely closely with the RCMP with the Department of Justice, with CIC and Customs within Canada, as well as U.S. authorities. Um, and in fact, I mean, we have, uh, we have liaison relationships with uh, 130 different countries and over 250 different agencies. What's valuable about the Rassam case is that it reinforces the, the, the necessity of this kind of cooperation. As you say, there were links in, in not only uh, between individuals operating in the United States, 
individuals operating in Canada, but also in Europe. And, and as we began to uncover them, I think it reinforced among officials involved in law enforcement and intelligence the critical need for this kind of transnational cooperation. Why would Islamic terrorists come to Canada? David Harris is former Chief of Strategic Planning at the Canadian Security and Intelligence Agency. I think in terms of Islamic extremists in Canada, they regard the proximity of uh, Canada to the U.S. as, as making Canada a kind of uh, Islamic extremist aircraft carrier for the launching of major assaults against the U.S. mainland. And that's something we've got to remember. Today's massive coordinated attack shows a level of sophistication well beyond what had been anticipated or predicted in the North American intelligence community. Most intelligence analysts thought a conspiracy of this magnitude would show up in the massive wiretapping and monitoring of suspected terrorists. Indeed, this is a complete failure of intelligence. Um, the United States, Canada and Allied Intelligence Services for a long time will be dissecting uh, how such a major conspiracy that must have used the airwaves, may have used the internet as, as a contact point, uh, could get through and, and be carried out without anybody waking up. Uh, this is havoc that has been created and I suppose many heads will roll and, and there will be lots of post-mortems conducted on how such a major conspiracy could be concealed. Sorry. Congresswoman Jane Harmon served on the U.S. Counterterrorism Intelligence Committee and has long pleaded for more resources to deal with international terrorism. Uh, what is uh, very worrisome is the goals of terrorists have changed. It used to be that, that terrorists would try to kill a few people and make a political point. Uh, but as we stated in this uh, terrorism report that I worked on last uh, year, uh, the goal no longer is a seat at the table. The goal is to blow up the table. Peter, there was a lot of finger pointing at Canada after the Ahmed Rassam case, and it, it really led to uh, a lot of concern about how easy it was for him to take advantage of the refugee and immigration rules in Canada, and there was a lot of pressure on Canada to tighten up. There's no indication that uh, you know there's any connection between Canada and and the uh, terrorists that performed the uh, attack today. But in spite of that, I think you can see a lot more pressure on uh, Canada and America's other allies to tighten up and uh, to make sure you're not providing a safe haven for, for terrorists. All right, Terrence, thanks very much. Terrence McKenna joining us tonight from Montreal, and he is, uh, as we have told you, preparing a major documentary on this issue, which will be uh, running uh, in the weeks to come on The National.